let's let's start. Um, captions. Um, all right, y'all. It is five thirty nine p.m. and I call this meeting to order. Let's start with work, uh, roll call. We'll have our secretary help me out. That'd be awesome. Senator Baiwala. Here. Senator Shiloh. Yeah. Senator Brown. Senator McDowell. Here. Senator Allen. Here. Senator Lee. Senator Banerjee. Senator Castellanos. Here. Senator Garcia. Here. Senator Gillis. Here. Senator Johnson. Here. Senator McFarland's here. Senator Ruiz. Here. Senator Taylor. Here. Senator Van Voris is here. Senator M. Also here. Senator Cowell. Here. Senator Baker. Senator Baker. Ah, sorry, she got out here. Awesome. Senator Ihamir Madu. He here. Senator Syed. All right. I believe we have quorum present. Awesome, awesome. So hopefully now we can see everyone's faces. Yay. All righty. I'm going to have to get this closer. All right, so um, today's agenda, exec reports, um, not approval of minutes. I did not send that out yet. And um, we do have some unfinished business. We have S2022 R6. We have new business. We have sen um, summer Senate confirmations, adjournment, campus life environment at 6.30 and adjournment. Um, move on to exec reports. Uh, Senator Gillis. Uh, Mr. Speaker, in the interest of time, I move that we go on to the next item of the agenda. Senator Johnson seconds. All right, does anyone object? Nope. All right, awesome. We'll move on to the next item of the agenda. Um, unfinished business, um, S2022 R6. Um, trans existence is not a debate, I believe. Um, Senator Cowell did um, submit a written motion for changes, and I'm going to add that last change onto the document because um, I forgot. Hey, while David is doing that, um, I'm going to go ahead and get started just so we can get through this in a reasonable amount of time. Um, so we spoke with uh, a lot of faculty members. Um, I don't have the full list right now, but if anybody wants to know exactly who we talked to about this, um, I can provide that in a minute. Um, so it was recommended that we focus on the UNT policy side of the issue and what um, UNT actually has the power to address, and that is uh, breaches of student code of conduct and in some ways also Title IX. So um, I'll go ahead and start with the motion. Whereas since the introduction of S2022 R6 on April 6th, the authors have gotten substantial feedback from administration and faculty members. Whereas we were advised to focus on the UNT policy side of the issue, so we decided to adjust our approach accordingly, striking sections that pertain to the First Amendment issues as those are not university controlled. Let it be resolved that the following amendments be made to S2022 R6. Um, and so we're adding a new whereas. This is going to be second in the document, and it is going to read, whereas UNT Student Code of Conduct 17.012 defines harassment as the unwelcome verbal or physical conduct because of race, color, national origin, religion, sex, sexual orientation, gender identity, gender expression, age, disability, genetic information, or veteran status, 
when conduct creates an intimidating, hostile, or offensive environment and is a sufficiently severe, persuasive, or persistent that it interferes with the student's ability to participate in a, or benefit from educational programs or activities, or b sufficiently severe, persuasive, pervasive or persistent that it unreasonably interferes with an employee's work performance or creates an intimidating, hostile, or offensive work environment. And discrimination as treating an individual or a group of individuals unfavorably in their employment or education because of race, color, national origin, religion, sex, sexual orientation, gender identity, gender expression, age, disability, genetic information, or veteran status. Um, a new whereas be added before this statement on President Smotrick's first email that reads, whereas on March 7th, the student organization in question also tweeted the phrase, quote, transgender people do not exist, and quote, um, the following statements be amended as so, uh, the trans student, excuse me, whereas the trans community at UNT feels threatened, unsafe, and harassed by the aforementioned student organization's transphobic actions and rhetoric, trans students are not satisfied with UNT administration's response to these events. Um, whereas on March 2nd, the event featuring guest speaker Jeff Younger took place. It was held in Curry Hall, which was closed except for the room meeting, uh, room that the meeting took place in, and guests were cut off from entering after capacity was reached just outside a few hundred protesters gathered in support of transgender students and children and were heard chanting, protect trans kids, among other things. The event itself comprised of protesters present shouting in an attempt to prevent Younger from speaking. Jeff Younger is quoted as saying things like, quote, there's no such thing as a trans person, and calling protesters snowflakes and communists during the meeting. Younger and other UNT students were escorted out of the building by campus police. Um, we are striking the phrase later that night. The police also responded to a complaint from someone in a local hospital who said they were hit by a UNT police vehicle. Uh, details as reported by Dallas Morning News and Peak News. Um, a quick aside, we took that out uh, because um, uh, some of the feedback we got felt that it was not relevant um, to the issue and so might uh, confuse the message. Um, I'll continue. The following amendments were made in this order. Whereas the above mentioned actions by the student organization were in clear violation of UNT policy 16.004, transphobic statements, actions, and rhetoric used on campus directly threatened the physical health and lives of UNT students and caused substantial and direct harm and distress to the trans community on campus. Whereas Title IX prohibits discrimination in education on the basis of sex as no person in the United States shall on the basis of sex be excluded from participation in, be denied from the benefits of, or be subjected to discrimination under any education program or activity receiving federal financial assistance. Additionally, in 2020, the U.S. Supreme Court held that similar language in the Title VII of the Civil Rights Act, which prohibits employment discrimination on the basis of sex in cases... Bostock versus Clinton County, Georgia, and Altitude Express Incorporated versus Zarda necessarily extended protection to individuals on the basis of sexual orientation and gender identity. A determination was based on the language of Title VII itself. This sets a precedent to interpret all federal legislation prohibiting discrimination because of sex to also prohibit discrimination on the basis of sexual orientation and gender identity. The following statements I'm not going to read all of them out. Uh, we're struck due to their involvement with the First Amendment um, <clears throat> as we decided to uh, strike that one of our many approaches to the legislation. Um, then the, the whereas statement, whereas language like criminalized child transitions is harassment and discrimination. The following has been struck, legally unlawful, must be considered a true threat per Virginia v. Black. And then the rest of the whereas remains intact. Um, the whereas uh, here is, has been struck. Some of that language actually is added to another um, whereas to make it more concise. And then we've added whereas UNT student code of conduct says students or student groups may be disciplined for attempting or engaging in the misconduct listed below including violations of federal, state, or local laws, whether convicted or not, or other UNT policies. This includes 16.004, the anti-discrimination and harassment policy. Um, the following statement uh, be also amended as so. Therefore, let it be resolved that any UNT student organization that engages in hate, streak, hate speech has been struck, and we've added harassment and discrimination to the list. Um, and then for the let it be further resolved, um, this is just fixing the references 
and we are are adding an appendix. And it's just now occurred to me that uh, Appendix H does not appear in this document, but it does appear in the appendix of this document, which is um, basically the legislation itself with the changes that we've outlined just to make it a little more streamlined. So if David doesn't mind also pulling that up for reference. I sure can. Thank you. And then last thing, um, last let it be resolved clauses, the title doctor be added to the director of student affairs, Krista. Point of information, Mr. Speaker, is yes. um, Krista the director of student affairs or student activities? Activities, sorry, that was my bad. Okay, thank you. <laughs> yes. Okay, respectfully submitted. All right, let me show y'all um, the version with the edits. So this is a version with the edits. Um, and you said, um, yes, there is a new, that is the tweet that we're referencing in one of the whereas new appendix. Okay. So I'm going to go up. Okay. Was supposed to be in there originally. Yes. Thank you. Okay. So let me wait until this saves. Oh my. Alrighty. Is there any motions for the written motion at hand? Uh, Senator Johnson. A motion that we go to a period of questioning. Okay. Is there a second? Senator Reese seconds. All right. You have the first uh, question. Can you go up to on the the mo yeah, that's one to where it's the where it's talking about the 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 tweet about the I believe YCT put out about yeah that one. Oh, in question. So we can't. So in the um, in the appendix for the new one, it we it's evidently clear that it's from YCT, right? Yeah. So why do we need to put the student organization in question and not YCT? Um, because that's how we've been referring to it in the document. Um, the point is not any specific student organization on campus. The point is is protecting trans across, students from any who would engage in harassment. Okay. Yes. Okay. And then other than the new changes here we're just going from first amendment we can't we can't <laughs> we can't do that in the student government association but we're going to like what we can actually implement policy correct yes yeah we're focusing on unt policy um rather than than the federal stuff does that change the the strength overall of what it does no i think if anything it makes it stronger um because this is something that the university is more likely to act on mm -hmm. because we are Focusing on how it interacts with UNT policy rather than than federal law, something that is in in regards to the First Amendment, still kind of in contention by mm -hmm. legal professionals, <laughs> of which none of us are. Mm -hmm. Not yet, yeah. But and then that's thank you. Yes, absolutely. Uh, Senator Lee. Hi, Beige. Um, so we're talking about Title IX now in this document. Is I could have just missed it. Is the document going to be sent to the Title IX coordinator, Eve Shatin Bell? Um, <clears throat> yes, I believe so. I can pull that if up. If not, um, that is something we can add. I will say because um, this is regarding student organizations, uh, any cases involving student orgs automatically go to Dean of Students. Um, and individual student cases are the only ones, to my understanding, that can be brought to Title IX. So we reference Title IX because it is part of UNT policy um, and because of how the, the language interacts with definitions regarding gender identity. Um, but if you think we, we should add the Title IX coordinator, we can definitely do that. I am not sure, that's why I asked. Okay. <laughs> Senator Johnson. Mr. Speaker, if there are no other questions, I move to um, vote on this by unanimous consent. Senator Gillis seconds. All right. Does anyone object? All right. The motion passes. And I'll make sure this will be now the new version of S2022 R6. 
I'm going to make sure I'm unhighlighting and striking out But now that we're considering the legislation itself, any motion, Senator Johnson? I move to go to a period of amendment or okay. amend. Uh, and how would you like to amend the document? It's just honestly, unless it's the quotes, it's honestly just to give the author and the speaker uh, just powers to kind of go fix back like the little grammar, grammatical errors in the like, whereas people like, for example, where it says like Eagle Connect and stuff like that, or there's one going down that says inter merely is spelled wrong. Um, so actually Eagle Connect is one word no, I'm talking and like stuff interimly, like that. interimly is actually the word that they use in the student code of conduct. Oh, okay. So I, yes, as far as I understand, when we went through this document, um, we checked all the grammatical stuff. Oh, mm -hmm. The only one, the only grammatical, um, or from the responses. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. I just like didn't. Know. I was like, that's like, see right there. It says yeah. intermerely. I don't know. That's how you spell that. Damn. Okay. Well, then, if there's no questions, Mr. Speaker, I move to vote on this piece of legislation. Um. Sorry. <laughs> All right. So no seconded. So we'll move on. A Senator Cow. If I might, um, raise a point of discussion. Yep. Um, some of the references, the numbers may have to be fixed. Is that something that you can do after the document is approved, David, or is that something we have to do now? We would have to do that, preferably now, because once the document is approved, um, that's how it's going to be disseminated to, um, to the peeps. Okay, then I move to go to a five-minute recess to let David fix the numbering and strikeouts and such on the document. Oh, you mean like... As I'm doing now, like the document itself, isn't that what you said? For like the references, um, the the numbering may be off now that we've taken some of them out, so they oh, would just I'm need to done. be adjusted. No, I'm I'm doing it as y'all discussing, so okay. everything should be almost done. So like, yes, but now reference fourteen is doesn't exist. And so, do you see what, it, like, in yes. the body of the document, they would need to be changed? Yes. Keep down seconds. Uh, Five-minute recess? Yeah. Does anyone object? All right, five-minute recess. We'll can reconvene at five, actually, no, 6.02 p.m. Okay. Peeps, I'm teams, are we, we are at recess. So, I'm going to, Devin, if you wouldn't, like wouldn't mind, yeah, I'm going to mute just, myself, yeah. but... Yes. I'm sorry if I wouldn't mind what? Uh, just putting like we're on recess under the chat function. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, yes. I'm going to mute this. So, yeah. Because I got to campus, it's slow to actually put it in the chat. Just FYI.
All right. I call meeting to order at 6.02 p.m. So we're back in session. Everything is as, as, okay, we're good. Yes. All right. So the floor is open for any motion. Senator Johnson. I move to go to a period of discussion. We're already in a period Oh, sorry, of questioning. Are we still in that? I thought we did so recently we're in to go period back of discussion. to discussion. So Senator Cowell made a discussion point earlier. So is there any discussion oh. on this or we, do we still have questions? If we do have questions, we can go back. Senator Johnson. If there are no questions or discussion points, I move that we go to a period of voting. Is there a second? Senator Reese seconds. All right. Anyone object? All right. Let's start roll call. Senator Baiwala. Aye. Senator McDowell. Aye. Senator Allen. Aye. Senator Lee. Aye. Senator Banerjee. Aye. Senator Castellanos. Aye. Senator Garcia. Aye. Senator Gillis. Aye. Senator Johnson. Aye. Senator McFarland. Aye. Senator Ruiz. Aye. Senator Taylor. Aye. Senator Von Voris. Aye. Senator M. Aye. Senator Cowell. Aye. Senator Baker. Aye. Senator Schulte. Aye. All right. I believe that was the unanimous vote. And the resolution passes. Um, it will be ref it'll be referred for Devin's approval or veto, and hopefully, um, like the comments were mentioned last week, Devin runs and signs it. <laughs> All righty. Okay. Well. All righty. Oh, why is it why is it doing that? Give me one second. My computer's been weird today. Alrighty, so we're now entering new business. So we have summer Senate confirmation. So on the screen is my membership list that I've received. Um, just a reminder for transparency, a couple we have the four uh, Senator elects that are uh, considering. So the, ch the list may change next week, but I wanted to make sure we had a summary Senate established. So we have um, Senator Bayola from the College of Business, um, currently gonna serve on summer Senate. Um, our current Senator Ruiz, Ethan, and McFarland. And then we have Senator Lex from CLASS. We have Senator Collins. Um, we have um, CVAD, Senator Elect. Um, Bambi, will not butcher your last name. Um, we have Senator from TAMS, Senator from Mayborn, another TAM Senator. Now that we have two, thanks to our, our new constitution. And of course we have a Senator Guan from Information. So um, I do have a little- Point of order, Mr. Speaker. Give me one second, yes. Never mind. Okay. So, whereas membership in the summer Senate requires great consideration for the merits each candidates, candidate brings, um, according to Article 3, Section 9, Subsection A, um, the summer Senate shall consist of at least 10 um, student senators who have been elected by the student body to serve a regular Senate term, which includes um, the spring semester immediate, immediately preceding or the fall semester meeting following the summer term in question, whereas a Microsoft form was sent out to Senator elect, senators elects and current senators to identify who was interested in serving on summer Senate. I'm gonna move this asterisk because that's now a yes. Therefore, with the advice and consent of the Senate, it is ordered that the following individuals 
are selected to serve on the 220th Senate session, summer 2022. Um, Cameron Collins, Zachary Lee, um, Tin K. Guan, Ethan Gillis, Zane Boala, Kaylin Ruiz, Peyton McFarlane, Ebony um, Kennedy, Anish Mazumder, Nisi Ambi, um, Bob Mibby. I apologize if I butchered names, so affirmed. Um, David Munoz Sarabia, SGA Vice President. Um, so the asterisks are for those are considering. So they did not confirm or deny that they wanted to be it just so we have people on there. And of course, if they decide not to, then we can reconvene. That's just so I put the asterisks there. But is there any questions? Senator Johnson? Mr. Speaker, if there are no questions, I move that we approve this or vote on it. Senator Ray seconds. All right. Does anyone object? All right. The list is approved and we have summer senators. All righty. Awesome. I will inform our um, point, of, point of information. Are any of the elects here who are not like. Yes, actually, can we have um, anyone that's going to be in summer Senate now come to the front? I completely forgot. Um, so if you are a summer senator, um, please come up to the front. I'm going to move the iPad. I'm going to move my iPad so the camera gets y'all. Can we give another round of applause to our summer senators? So um, I don't know if Devin, you want to take a picture since you're really great. We've never really done this, but I'm really excited. Um, Is the president equipped to take a photo? Yes. He's a good photographer. What you mean? <laughs> yes. Oh my God. Say that again. And that was sponsored by me. All right. Can I? All right. Take take one with me now. I want to be. I want to be included. All right, thank y'all. Um, any shout outs or announcements? All right, sh um, shout them out. All righty, shut him out. April 26, State of the Undergrad. Yes, please go. I have an announcement uh, slash uh, a shout out. Okay. Uh, Ethan Gillis has been made student director of the Student Alumni Association. Whoa, whoa. And also ambassador applications are now open. Apply, apply, apply and apply. <laughs> Yes, I'm gonna. Hi, so you all should apply to be Student Alumni Association ambassadors, and here's why. It's a great opportunity to network, to meet other students who are passionate about the university, and you get loads of free swag. You get the dope cardigans that Grant and I wear every week, and you get a free class ring. Sophia's modeling it right now. Highly encourage y'all to apply. 
it is awesome. It is awesome. So do it. Thank you. Awesome. No. <laughs> Shout him out, y'all. So the Senate Internal Committee is having an event uh, April 22nd in the Senate chambers at from 7 to 8. There will be free food. It is a Senate mixer. So if you're a senator, you should come. If you're not a senator, you should come. It's open to the public. If you want to talk with your representatives and get some free food while you're at it, it's going to be a great great chance for that so seven to eight at night it's going to be fun it's going to be lots of fun this is uh the closest senate is getting to a social so please come all right any other announcements <laughs> senator allen go ahead um the diversity and inclusion we uh committee is having a clothing drive uh the bins are located in between and here in the union, in between like the restrooms and like the piano, if you know where that is, it's across from the Lyceum. On the second floor of the union. On the second floor. And we are accepting donations until Friday. So come whoa, donate whoa. clothes, clear out your closet. You don't need all those. I might do that for me. Oh, yes. Oh, and wow. specifically, it is to benefit the uh, outfits closet run by the um, Pride Alliance to benefit trans students. Alrighty, any other announcements? I don't know if you guys know this, but in ex approximately six minutes, we will be getting ready for a Campus Life and Environment event. We're having a self-care grab and go. So if you guys would like to help out, even if you're not in the community, that'd be awesome. That way you can also meet your constituents and, you know, just have more senator, like, uh, you know, contact. And get free great. stuff. And great free stuff. All right, bye. Thank you. All right. Mr. Speaker. Yes. If there are no other announcements or shout outs, oh, yeah, one more. I got one. All right. So, as y'all know, this is the second to last Senate meeting. We did it, y'all. We did it. Get, yeah, round of ourselves for y'all. Um, so, next week, this, so if you did not submit legislation, make sure this is, unless you're on Summer Senate, this is it. Next week is it. Um, I think I'm going to have committee. Um, and college reports for y'all to kind of showcase anything that you done so far or to recap anything, please have them written out and sent to me so I can have it on the PowerPoint. I really, really appreciate that. Um, trying to think, but yes, next week is, will be our last Senate meeting. Um, so try to get some of those stuff turned in beforehand and yeah, this was a great year. So any more? Yeah. All righty. Any other announcements or shout outs? If not, yes. Go ahead, JT. Five PM Saturday. Um BSU a uh, tenth. 10th, yes, 10th year anniversary ball. Masquerade. All righty. Any other announcements or shout outs? Um, I actually do have another. So my quartet's final performance for the year is going to be on the 25th at noon in the recital hall. So if anybody's interested, I can give you a very detailed map in how to navigate the music building. So Okay. We've been waiting all year for that one. That's why it's called the waiting song. <laughs> all righty. Any other announcements or shout outs? If not, I call this, I adjourn this meeting at 6 17 p.m. Let the event start. <laughs>